fan of technology, and I recently had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Justine Lee, uh, known as Vet Girl, about a new product. It's a health band for pets that they wear around their neck, and it takes measurements of respiration, heart rate, etc. And I think the implications for this wearable tech for the future of pet medical health is huge. Take a look. We've been talking to Dr. Justine Lee, CEO of Vet Girl, uh, blogger, lecturer, author, work-life balance coach. <laughs> All <laughs> yeah, <these> right. <laughs> Emergency veterinarian, and, and uh, right now we're, we, we started talking before coming back from the break is is about technology and how technological technological advances are really. Um, blending with veterinary medicine and and uh, recently you joined a, a group that creates a product called voice and I'll let you describe the product I'll let you describe what it does and then we can discuss from there sure so um, I'm actually really excited I'm a blogger for voice and um, you can find it under my dog's voice on social media and what it basically is is it's a wellness band and I don't know if you can see it on uh, oh yeah this time but basically in my opinion, it's really similar to my Fitbit, <laughs> but fancier. And so um, I actually am just beta testing this for voice right now on my own dog, on my own pit bull. And what it does is it, it sets up a, a Wi-Fi um, spot off the collar, connects your Wi-Fi and syncs every four hours or manually whenever you want to sync it. And the benefit is it's had a unique team of veterinarians um, one of the other beta testers is Dr. Tim Hunt, who actually ran that dinner ride. He's a veterinarian, so he's testing this on some sled dogs um, with the nutritionist at Cornell and also the cardiologist, Dr. Mark Krause at Cornell. And it's a really unique way of capturing a lot of important health information about your dog. I know right now there's a craze of the Fitbit. Um, I work from home when I'm not at the clinic, so I like to, three days a week, make sure I get my 10,000 steps. Uh, just for my own exercise. Um, some of the fancier um, devices for humans can check heart rate and things like that. And what I like about the voice collar is it basically uh, sits snugly against your dog's neck and it measures heart rate, respiratory rate, distance, um, activity, sleep, a bunch of different factors. And so if you have an athletic dog, you're scoojuring with your dog, you're running the I did a ride, you wanna see how many miles you get on, um, great way of being able to track that. But I actually think this has a huge implication for dogs with certain medical problems. Boxers with boxer right ventricular cardiomyopathy, um, Doberman pinchers with dilated cardiomyopathy, um, dogs with certain types of cardiac arrhythmias or with heart murmurs where we're worried they can go into congestive heart failure. And not all owners, in fact, I would say the majority of owners can't measure heart rate at home. We can teach them how to measure respiratory rate. I always tell them, you know, count the number of breaths within 15 seconds and just multiply it by four. And my general rule is if it's more than 50 to 60 breaths per minute, they need to go to a vet just in case they're in congestive heart failure. And that's different if you're, you know, you just went running with your Labrador and you're panting. Normal healthy panting is fine, but when it's constant, we always worry about underlying lung problems. So I think the benefit is that if you have a smaller dog that has um, chronic valvular heart disease or what we call leaky valves, leaky heart valves, it's a great way where your veterinarian can actually look at your uh, patient's data or your pet's data and look at the heart rate and the respiratory rate. So as a vet, if I get a call or as a cardiologist, um, they get a call about one of their patients, they can literally just go onto the internet, log in, look at the pet, see what the heart rate is and make that decision on how to treat it or whether or not that patient needs to go into the emergency room or not for treatment. So all this data, um, it syncs at home and it goes in, into the cloud, so to speak. And so that, and you, you give out, you as the pet owner give access to whoever to, to log Correct. in and see this. Correct. It's totally proprietary to you. So it's password locked. So only you would see it and um, you would give access to your veterinarian if you wanted your veterinarian to have that information. Otherwise it's protected. And is it available now, or are we just um, on the cusp of its release? Yep. It's actually available available for pre-order now, but I don't believe it's going to be actually mailed out until early March. Okay. And what's what's the cost of something like this? Ooh, 
I don't know the financial thing. Okay. Okay, no, <laughs> I, I believe it's approximately two hundred, but okay. don't quote me on that. No, that's fine. That, that, that's fine. I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna do well. I think it's got a lot of applications. I think uh, what I love about this is it's one of the first first good ones that I've seen for pets, and right. I think it's gonna. Um, you know, as things morph it and develop, I think you're gonna see some interesting things out of there. Because right now, people just get the GoPro camera and watch their dog run into right. the ocean or something like that. I think that from a medical standpoint, this is this is really good. Absolutely, especially for heart rate. Yes, yes, and 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 for the breeds you talked about for cardiac disease, I think it's very important.